Hello once again from David Dilema, speaking to you from the Public Schools Club here in Adelaide, South Australia. Our message today is entitled, Observing Remembrance Day. Observing Remembrance Day. Our opening quotable quotation comes from the poet John McRae, who back in 1915 began his famous poem with these words. In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. So today we will be looking at six areas. Firstly, remembrance of things past. And then secondly today, sounding the gospel trumpet on Remembrance Day. And thirdly, flagging the victory of life over death. And then fourthly today, Sleeping and waking, dying and rising there in Scripture. And fifthly today, considering the poppies. And sixthly today, holding commemorative services which honour the fallen. So we begin today with the remembrance of things past. The First World War, 1914 to 1918, it was the most bloody conflict up until that time. It took four years and it claimed more than eight million lives. But you know, there was a time early in the First World War when a number of the soldiers ceased shooting each other just for a few days. It occurred during the first freezing winter of the war at the Western Front. In fact, it was on Christmas Eve of 1914 when the German soldiers started singing a Christmas carol. Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht. Of course, that's the song Silent Night. The Germans then held up a sign, but stated, You no shoot, we no shoot. Someone yells out, don't shoot. <laughs> and then suddenly, hundreds of soldiers began climbing from their trenches on both sides and they started to walk towards each other into what's called no man's land. And they began shaking hands, laughing, joking, <laughs> expressing Christmas greetings one to another to the same people they'd been trying to shoot for the past several months. Silent Night is sung together, two languages with one tune. The soldiers began exchanging rations, buttons, comparing family photos. Some even played a rough game of soccer with caps for the goalposts. They gathered dead friends from the battlefield for decent burial. And this prefigured the journey into eternity as the troops arose from the trenches to sing songs of praise as a basis of reconciliation they made a resurrection parable. Well, the peace persisted briefly and then the hostilities resumed until what we call the armistice at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month there in 1918. Now to honour those who gave their lives during the First World War and in subsequent theatres of conflict, many Commonwealth nations hold Remembrance Day services on the 11th of November each year. And there are three profound spiritual elements in the commemoration. There's the flag ceremony, and then there is the playing of the bugle or the trumpet, and the wearing of the red poppy. So let's look at these. Sounding the gospel trumpet on Remembrance Day, our second area. Remembrance Day ceremonies usually include a bugler who will be playing two tunes. There's the last post and then another tune called the rouse. The last post and the rouse. These link each soldier's daily waking and rising towards the call of, of raising up to life with faith in Christ. While soldiers are traditionally woken by the Reveille or the Reveille played on the bugle, they are called soon thereafter to rise up from their beds to the sound of the rouse. 
And then, of course, the day concludes with what's called the last post. But on Remembrance Day, the order of those tunes is reversed because the soldier must die before he can rise. Thus, the last post is played first and then the rouse after a minute of silence so that we might ponder the call upon each one of us to sleep at the end of the day or in death and then to rise at dawn or at the trumpet call to the resurrection and to eternal life. Now, rising to life at the call of the trumpet is denoted in many biblical texts. Let's look at some of those. Jesus declared about himself, the Son of Man will send his angels with a loud trumpet and they will gather his elect. This is in Matthew chapter 24. And then Paul wrote these words, we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. The trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul also declared the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And of course, the reference to the biblical last trumpet is found for us in the third stanza of famous hymn, O Valiant Hearts which is sung traditionally on Remembrance Day in many nations. Splendid you passed, the great surrender made, into the light that never more shall fade. Deep your contentment in that blessed abode who wait the last clear trumpet call of God. Those words written by Sir John Stan Hope Arkwright. And thirdly, today, flagging the victory of life over death. The flag, it denotes deep spiritual truths on Remembrance Day by the way it's arranged. It indicates lamentation and the temporary triumph of death over life. The flag is lowered slowly to what's called half, half mast or half staff. In fact, it should be one flag's depth below the peak that makes room for the imaginary black ensign, the flag of death. And then comes the recital of the Ode of Remembrance, which is from the fourth verse of the poem For the Fallen, written by the English writer Lawrence Binion. It was first published in the Times newspaper in London and entered usage in 1921 as part of services within Commonwealth nations on Armistice Day, which is now known as Remembrance Day in, in many countries and certainly in Australia since 1977. Here's the Ode of Remembrance. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. And then the people echo, we will remember them. And next comes the playing of the last post, followed by a minute of silence. Da 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 That's the last post. And then as the bugle plays the rouse, the uh, to denote resurrection, the flag is raised to the peak signifying the triumph of life over death through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the rouse bugle call. Listen to these words in 1 Corinthians. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own turn. Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. It's 1 Corinthians 15. And fourthly today, sleeping and waking, dying and rising in Scripture. 
Along with the dying soldiers who prefigure spiritual realities, everyone dies daily in sleep and awakens to new life in the morning. It's a testimony, a rehearsal. Hence the Bible links sleeping and waking with dying and rising. So we read that multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, according to the book of Daniel, chapter 12. And regarding the dead young girl, Jesus said, she is not dead, but asleep. This is in Luke chapter 8. And concerning the dead man Lazarus at Bethany, Jesus said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. This is in John chapter 11. And then the Apostle Paul told the Ephesians in chapter 5, Wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And there's another prefiguring of dying and rising. It's found among plants as they enter the earth as apparently dead seeds that, in fact, then come alive. So the red poppy, indicative of bloody battlefields, is often connected to resurrection and to remembrance. And so fifthly today, considering the poppies. The red poppy became internationally symbolic of remembrance according to the following trajectory. In 1915, the Canadian soldier John McRae, he composed his famous poem In Flanders Fields, as he noted that poppies arise from soil which is disturbed through burial. It is indeed the first plant to emerge from the devastated battlefields. And then in 1918, Moina Michael urged the wearing of poppies to honour dead soldiers, and she wrote these excellent words, O you who sleep in Flanders fields, sleep sweet to rise anew. We caught the torch you threw, and holding high, we keep the faith with all who died. As noted in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we rise to eternity like seeds from the soil. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined. And sixthly today, holding commemorative services which may honour the fallen. Remembering all who gave their lives to secure peace, freedom and prosperity, Australia and other nations traditionally hold ceremonies on the morning of Remembrance Day as follows. At 10.30 we have the lowering of the flag to half-mast, that's one flag's depth below the peak with hymns and prayer. Then at 10.58 we have the Ode of Remembrance with the last line echoed by the people. And then we have the playing of the last post on the bugle to sleep in death. Then at 11 o'clock, keeping one minute of silence, denoting dead soldiers resting asleep in the grave. And then at 11.01, raising the flag as the bugle plays the rouse, the call to rise up from sleep, from death. At 11.02, quoting the words, lest we forget, echoed by the audience. To explore those very profound elements, churches might like to hold outreach services and maybe to circulate Remembrance Day bookmarks or cards in the suburbs. Thanks can be sent to military personnel who are keeping the peace until the return of the Prince of Peace. Concerning him it is written, he will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up the sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. As we read in Isaiah chapter 2. Let us always remember better to light a candle than curse the darkness. I'm David DeLima. Cheerio.